Hello everyone, it's Jaren with NCSI. Today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about uh, Avanti Endpoint Manager 2022 release. The first thing I want to point out is this. They have dropped the .1 or .3 nomenclature off of the release names now. Um, we used to have a .1 was the initial release and a .3 was feature enhancements and they did that for the 2017 uh, 2016, 2017, and 2018 releases. They did stop it in 2019. I've been just been doing the dot one. Uh, they finally just said, "Hey, since we only do one release a year, we're just going to shorten that. And just call it EPM 2022." So, little change there to get used to. The next thing I want to point out, and uh, today is June 10th, so this could change between now and when you view the video. But there is an error on the compatibility matrix, the, the website I'm on here. And down here under Endpoint Manager Core Server, we have Windows Server 2016, and it does show that it is supported for EPM 2022. This is incorrect. Um, I have lodged a, a ticket with Avanti to either update this web page or update the binaries for the install but both from a fresh install perspective and an upgrade from 2021.1 to 2022, uh, the installer will say that server 2016 is not supported. So please ignore this and just move on from it. Uh, hopefully it'll be updated by the time that this video um, is, is released and, and viewed by you. Um, also, we are losing support for Server SQL Server 2012 and SQL Server 2014. Further up the list, you'll see that support has been dropped for Solaris. It is gone. HPUX, it is also gone. AIX, gone. They have stopped supporting it. Those agents have been dropped out of the console. You won't see them anymore. So make sure and plan for that if you need to manage any of those devices plan on staying whatever version you're on and not upgrading. All right, let's move to the release notes and see what new stuff we have here. As a demonstration, uh, the downloader that I have uh, has this string behind it, Avanti 2022 3Q1JMHY5. This is the message you get. Uh, this is an upgrade from 2021.1. I also tried a fresh install on a new server of 2016 to go to EPM 2022, and I still get this failure. Uh, we will update with a link at least in the description if possible, or at least text in the description, letting you know whether this is an issue with the installer or an issue with the web page. My bet is that it's an issue with the web page, and um, they'll just need to get that corrected. Okay, let's move over to our release notes and talk about that. So, um, first thing, there's the summary of architectural changes. We're going to cover that in just a minute. I'll go through it. It has kind of a, a punch list of the, of the major changes. Um, we have some new stuff for Autopilot. Um, the big thing is support for PowerShell scripts. Um, they've added that uh, as well. There are some new Mac OS features. We can take a look at those. Uh, faster inventory service, which I thought was already pretty darn fast anyway. Uh, local administrators have been added to the inventory, which is nice. And you have an option for checking disk space requirements before patching, which that was new in uh, 2021 update 2, SU2, I believe, for Windows. And now they've added that for uh, Mac OS in here as well. Okay, another big thing, Web Console 2.0. Um, this is by far, the web console in EPM is by far one of the biggest complaints I see from customers. It's antiquated, it's clunky, it doesn't support many things, and so they've created this new web console 2.0. Um, it is a work in progress, so you see they have a, a little feedback form here that you can send feedback to the engineers to help improve it. But for the time being, it supports remote control and one-to-one -one software installation, meaning you can go to a computer 
Click install software and install comp uh, software on that computer. You can't do it on multiples. You couldn't do a many to a one to many on that. You can't say install it on X, Y, and Z computer. It's just the computer that you're you're looking at here. So they're going to be adding more and more features to this. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be a complete replacement for the remote console. Um, however, it will be a, a, an augmentation to what is available um, already and can certainly support like a help desk role um, a lot more easily going forward than uh, installing that whole uh, fat console. All right. Um, they have a new uh, core log reader and troubleshooting tool. Um, uh, I haven't used it yet. It is in beta. It does require a registry key to, to enable. Um, but it does look interesting and could be helpful in the future. Instead of going out to that uh, log share in the uh, management suite folder, you can uh, just launch this and, and see all the errors and system, um, system events um, that you want to see in here. So pretty cool. Worth checking out. Um, by the way, there will be a link in the video uh, for these release notes. Uh, obviously, the release notes have links to almost everything else. I'll put one in there for the supported um, compatibility matrix, excuse me. And um, I'll also put one in there for uh, another link that we haven't gone over yet. Okay, here's some of the other big things that we're doing here. End of life for Unix operating systems. So they are no longer supporting Unix. That agent, uh, those, those agents have been removed completely from the console. Also, end of life is spyware blocking and blocked applications. So uh, most customers I've talked to don't really do that anyway. Um, I don't see very many doing spyware. There are a few of you out there who are using blocked applications, uh, maybe creating your own list of block applications or uh, using the supplied list. Uh, that, or that capability is now gone. Um, obviously, spyware uh, is covered usually by your antivirus suite, whatever that is. And the application blocking, which is fairly rudimentary here inside of EPM, is now available um, in UWM, or not now, it's been available for a long time, in the user workspace manager suite. They have application control in there and it works much, much better. Way more secure, a lot more options. So they've removed that uh, functionality here as well. Also, and this is probably the, the biggest one, uh, for most people is the end of life for legacy and HTML remote control. So if you're used to being able to log in uh, to the console and uh, launching the IIS or ISS user uh, console to, to do remote controls, you're not going to be able to do that anymore. Uh, they have replaced it with remote control WS, which now is just called remote control. Um, so that is gone, uh, and unfortunately, I know a lot of people use that in the HTML5 remote control, um, but they have given us tools to replace that. Uh, between the uh, remote control WS that you can actually bake into a browser um, and the help desk console and the web console 2.0, you shouldn't really miss these features as much. Um, however, I do know there are some people out there that want to use like chat um, and the screen drawing thing. Those are not available. So. Um, you might want to hold off on upgrading until they either add those features or you can find a way to, to supplement those, uh, those needs. Okay, um, that's it for the major things. Now let's go through that, uh, that little punch list of all the stuff that's new um, right here. So Web Console 2.0 we covered. Um, feature toggle um, between uh, iOS and Android MDM is uh, support based on license. So um, they have a, a new thing. You used to get some MDM licensing with EPM. Now it's a, a separate feature, so you have to pay for those licenses separately. Um, older customers who have been using this already, uh, as you can see, will be grandfathered in. They can continue to have that. However, um, new customers purchasing this will no longer gain those iOS and, and Android MDM support. Um, it will still support, though, MDM or Modern Device Management for Windows 10 and for Mac OS, just not the mobile version there, iOS. We talked about the autopilot enhancements in, uh, in PowerShell. Um, some provisioning enhancements, upgrading the, the Windows PE build, upgrading the version of ImageW that they're using. Um, another big one down here is, uh, well, we talked about the removal of AIX and HP Unix and Solaris report already. They're adding UEFI and, and BIOS TPM information to the mini scan. They're also, this is a big one, re-enabling the ldprov.cgi 
Uh, this is what is used in the real-time inventory and monitoring and inspector. And uh, I have a fairly large number of customers who, who utilize this feature. It was disabled um, starting in 2021. Um, and uh, they had a security issue with it. You could enable it through a registry key. They've now patched that security hole and it is enabled by default. Big, big news there. That's really nice to have and really helpful. Uh, another one, this one's uh, big for the people who need it. In, uh, the query import dialog removed, there was a 50 input limit. So when you're importing information into a query, you had a 50, 50 item limit now. They've gotten rid of that, which is big for those who use it. Most people, I don't think, use it a lot, but it is nice to have if you do. All right, and then this one tucked all the way down at the bottom here, number 13, beta features. We talked about the troubleshooting log viewer. Here's the other one, new engine-based agent with support from other teams. What's this? Well, there's not a link here, but uh, there is a link available. This is the other one I'll put in the video description that talks about the engine-based agent information. And essentially what we're seeing here is a pretty big shift away from the way the, away from um, the current agent and the and, and the way it works, uh, especially in regards to installation and removal, uh, to this more modular modern um, architecture here. So, awesome things like verifying files uh, before downloading and the hashes. Uh, we can now have a signed MSI installer, which was a big big deal for people who are uh, doing application blocking. Um, lots of manageability improvements too. Auto upgrade. Oh my gosh, that has been a huge request for for so long from so many customers. Auto upgrade and update of agents. So this includes SUs and major version upgrades. So no longer will you have to do the scheduled task and and push everything out. Um, once they get this engine out of beta, this uh, this new feature, you'll be able to just have your agents upgrade on their own, which is amazing. So happy for that. Um, real big deal. I couldn't tell you the number of times I log into a core server to help a customer out and they have agents from six versions ago, maybe not six, but they have agents from several releases ago that, that are actually aren't even supported anymore. And we have to work to get those upgraded and everybody on the same version. This is going to really affect that and help. Drag and drop agent config changes, faster install, which is another big one. That agent took quite a while to install before. We're going to see what kind of times we can get that down to. We'll have a future video on this, by the way, to talk about it more in depth and test with it. Agent health is built in. Agent will attempt to self-heal. They had a feature somewhat like that um, in current versions, uh, but this is going to take it to the next level and make it more automatic. A, uh, engine and agent communications are more isolated. We have separate engines for separate things, and we can repair just the specific parts of the products um, with no full agent install needed. This is something uh, veteran EPM admins have, have gotten used to of like, oh, something broke with the agent. It's not doing inventory scans. It's not doing vulnerability scans or it's not doing remote control. We'll just re-push that agent to fix that. Hopefully this is going to make that a thing of the past. This article has a lot more information. I don't want to cover all of it uh, in this video, uh, talking about how to, how to operate it and some of the, ch the changes that you'll see with it. And also there are some things that are going to stay legacy for now. Um, and uh, like I said, we'll maybe cover this whole, uh, whole thing in another video uh, to talk about it. But really cool, big feature there. Um, EPM 2022 has been out for almost a month now. Um, I've had it in my lab now for that entire time. Haven't really had any issues with it. Um, so as of today, and uh, this is in early June of 2022, as of today, um, I do recommend installing it. Uh, if you have a test environment, obviously that's the best place to put it first. If you don't, um, some people like to wait until that first service update hits. Um, but you can see there's lots of big changes. Just make sure you pour over these release notes and uh, that you're not going to lose anything that you depend on before upgrading. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch this video with me. Um, please reach out with any questions. You can contact us there through the, the YouTube channel. You can put comments in and we'll respond. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.